Good morning, everyone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me start uh, our talk. Uh, we are first talk in this morning. So we, I'm Jung Kyu Shin from South Korea and working at Revrop. And Jun Gi Kim from uh, the same country, South Korea, and working as uh, CTO in Lebro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we will introduce the Sokoban. It's a very, very interesting implementation for the content, completely new content, content orchestrator, especially for the accelerated machine learning and AI. So let me start. We will explain the problem and our approaches to solve. And after that, we will introduce the Sokoban and explain some characteristics. After that, we will just explain some practical case and show the short demonstration. So let's start. You know the Sokoban game. It's just a push some container to appropriate location. So we just name it Sokoban. Nowadays, the machine learning and AI workload are getting bigger and bigger. So it, the pace is very, very fast. But the problem is that the container has just some problems nowadays. And high performance computing, in contrast, it has a very different characteristics from the machine learning workload, but also it has uh, uh, some the very <laughs> high uh, barrier to use the containers. And also, the, even though the container is very easy to make your own co computation environment, but the container is actually not in intended for the long running job or patchy workload, especially with uh, current orchestrators. So we tried to solve the problem in 20, 2015, maybe eight years ago, because we were get addicted to the container and there is a Docker. So we tried to make uh, some research platform on Docker. At the time, the Slurum is widely used and Docker just came to public three years ago, and there was no Kubernetes. It's just named as a Google book. And of course, there, is, there are no NVIDIA container or GPU specific container systems yet. So we tried to combine the pros of the Slurm and the Kubernetes, at the time just a book, to solve the problem with a good point of each systems. When we start our project, we tried to make some plugin architecture or modifi modification to the Kubernetes system. At the time, that was better. But we faced a lot of problems at the time. Because Kubernetes is a really, really great tool, but actually it's not intended to run the AI workload, especially for the patchy workload. Nowadays, it's getting better and better, but eight years ago, there was no way to use Kubernetes for the long patchy job and long running complex computation task. So we just think we let's just build a new container system. So we maybe with that new container system we can make a patchy Patchy, patchy jobs and the uh, interactive jobs together very well. And maybe we can just uh, abstract the, the hardware facing APIs or we can just uh, adopt the many, many new technologies into the, our new container system. So maybe our new container system can be super fast because we can make it by our own with our yeah, many tweaks. And maybe it's super customizable because we try to make it in uh, Python. But the problem is that, you know, 
the container ecosystem is quite large, and there is a many, 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 many improvement on the container ecosystem. So if we make our own, we cannot adopt the progress or challenge progress from the Kubernetes ecosphere, right? But anyway, we tried to start make our own system eight years ago. So we named this as a Sokoban, actually. Sokoban is a game to push the container into the exact position. And the biggest difference between our the Sokoban and the Kubernetes, there's no part. We don't have any kind of part architecture with our systems. So it's very flexible. Every nodes are just the container nodes and the VM or the usually the open stack node. And we can just run any kind of container on the system. Maybe it can be Docker or Containerd or others. For example, the Magnum. And also we apply the customized scheduler on specific nodes, computation nodes. So we can choose many, many uh, patterns for, for the scheduler. And also we focus on the multi-tenants because we, fa we face a lot of GPUs and uh, nodes. So we focus on the fully acceleration aware system and also combines the two level scheduler from the a whole system, cluster level node scheduler and the intranode scheduler too. And also we made a job, job or the agent server system to manage various the container management software such as Docker or Containerd and Kubernetes itself too. And also finally we make a very straightforward integration for the many, many hardwares, including the GPU, MPUs, and the many accelerated network systems. So we make it open source since 2017, and we run the Mono repo, and we, our system runs on the X, X, <coughs> Intel architecture, ARM architecture, and disk 5 too, and runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And also it runs Parameter or OpenStack and Docker or Podman and many kind of uh, container-based systems. And even nowadays we support the direct management for the OpenStack VMs. So our system is written in Python, newest Python version. And we use the PostgreSQL and Redis and DCD. And we start our project in, since 2015, and we open sourced our project in 2017, and uh, we announced our system is OpenStack ready in 2018. And actually, the Sokoban is the part of the backend that AI suite, the open source AI and machine learning platform, and each container file component is known as Sokoban, as we explain today. And now it operates on many, many AI clusters. And you are already using the, some result from the Sokovan. For example, if you are using the Samsung smartphones or some LG the, what, DC washers or any kind of the systems, you are already using the AI weight on our systems. And nowadays, we are running the 10,000 enterprise GPUs among the, the world, and it's increasing. Actually, the number is not counting the open source version GPUs. So our component is quite simple. We have a container file as a Sokovan, and we have a, a lot of the server systems, and the storage specific proxies and other components. And also, it just uh, it uh, received a request from the users, and distributed by the manager to the agent. And agent has their own container engines, 
and it run container or VMs. And you can start it right, right now by using the development setup. It's a kind of dev stack for the Sokoban. So like you install the dev stack on your system, you can just uh, type the install dev script in to install the whole the system on your computer. Or if you have uh, some production level setup, you can just uh, use the Python package. So I will toss my mic to Jungini about the characteristics. Yeah, so let me uh, introduce a little bit more details about our uh, Sukoban Orchestra. So, uh, actually, we were given like a 15 minutes talk, but uh, the next talk will begin in um, 10 a.m., so we have a couple of more minutes. So, uh, so I think I'm going to uh, explain more details. So uh, we have many uh, key features uh, embedded inside the Scoban Orchestrator, uh, which are tailored for HPC and AI-oriented GPU-accelerated workloads, as well as uh, latest like MPU or like ASIC-based workloads as well. Uh, we have many uh, kinds of abstractions for uh, like resource groups and accelerators and storage uh, back and so on, but uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the uh, scheduler-related parts. So let me go through here. So we have a multi-level scheduler, uh, which works in the level of the entire cluster, and the secondary level is work in uh, per computing nodes. So uh, the cluster level scheduler uh, runs inside the manager component, uh, which administrator administrates all the clusters and monitors the uh, computing node status and uh, manages the user databases and access controls and etc. So uh, the manager scheduler controls the density and priority of the main workloads and it performs iterative uh, two-phase scheduling per resource group. So uh, the resource group is a logical uh, unit of uh, the set of agent uh, where uh, the actual computation runs. So uh, you can map uh, any resource groups to any user or project to have the access. And um, uh, inside each resource group, we have a set of agent and we, uh, for, uh, we feed the scheduler about uh, what computing sessions are already running and uh, what are the agents and what are their like capacities and what accelerators they have and so on. All these things are given as a structured input to the scheduler. And the scheduler uh, decides to think uh, which pending session will be scheduled first and then which agent node will host that uh, session. Uh, actually, uh, we also support multi-node and multi container uh, sessions. So uh, in that case, uh, individual agents, uh, there, may, there may be multiple agents to map the single session. And uh, uh, we have a scheduler plugin interface, so each plugin may define these two steps separately. And uh, we already uh, ships uh, our Sokoban orchestrator with two, uh, three uh, schedulers. Uh, one is a heuristic FIFO and LIFO and DRF. I think the uh, so heuristic FIFO uh, is a special scheduler that works like mostly like a FIFO scheduler, uh, first uh, in and first out, but uh, it has a special concern for preventing the head of line blocking problem. So for example, um, if there is uh, like a pending session request that requires too much amount of resources, then it cannot be scheduled on the cluster. And uh, all the remaining like a subsequent uh, pending requests are just get blocked because of the session cannot be scheduled forever. So in that case, we uh, automatically boost the priority of the uh, subsequent uh, smaller sessions that can be scheduled uh, right now so that uh, the con cluster keep continues to working on uh, the new sessions. And also we have many detailed configurations like pending timeouts and so on so that we can automatically kill uh, if some uh, session creation requests uh, waits uh, too uh, 
too much amount of time and things like that. And uh, we also have implemented DRF, Dominant Resource Fairness, uh, which tries to uh, distribute uh, uh, like overall laws across different types of resources in the cluster. And uh, in the node level resource scheduler, uh, which runs inside the agent, uh, which are like a small daemons uh, running alongside the containers, uh, you can think this as a kind of a, a daemon set in Kubernetes, maybe. And um, it allocates the actual computing resources to individual containers, and um, uh, it considers many uh, stuffs. So, uh, for example, uh, the, if there are like a NUMA nodes, multiple NUMA nodes in the uh, agent node uh, with different GPUs mapped to installed on different NUMA nodes and so on, uh, it considers uh, such layouts and uh, things to optimally uh, assign the uh, computer devices. And uh, also, we also take advantage of NVIDIA's NCCL, Nickel, uh, to automatically configure the overlay networks and uh, interconnect between the containers when uh, things are distributed. I will go into more details about this. So, uh, for example, uh, the NUMA awareness is a key, one of the key scheduler feature required for HPC-oriented workloads. Um, we pre we provide two different policies that can be configured when you run a new uh, computer session comprising of multiple containers. So one is interleaving and the other is preferred single load. So uh, for example, uh, uh, with Weka.io uh, or other GPU direct storage, uh, some of them often requires having active CPU cores uh, on the same NUMA node where the assigned GPUs are uh, residing in. So in that case, we need to apply the interleaving policy so that uh, we can we could ensure all uh, CPU cores from the same NUMA node from the GPU, the set of GPUs uh, we are allocating. And uh, but if we uh, in other case, we may also want to the prefer single node policy to maximize the performance uh, by like concentrating uh, the workloads into a single node to eliminate the like memory access uh, delays. So uh, also we are support the arbitrary number of NUMA nodes. So some of our deployments has four NUMA nodes. So uh, it works well there as well. And uh, we do also support multi-node and multi-container clustering. This is uh, particularly uh, nowadays getting uh, more popular because of the uh, like a rise of large language models like GPTs and things like that. Uh, because uh, the the model size are too big, so it cannot fit inside a single GPU node. So we uh, are forced to use multi-node training in that case. So um, we support multi-container workload in two modes. So one is a multi-node and the other is single node. And the, for each mode, we apply different networking schemes like overlay networks and bridge networks. And uh, we also support like nickel-based RDMA interconnects between the GPUs, uh, like NVLINKs, NVSwitch, and so on. And uh, we also support uh, GPU direct storage, uh, which accelerates uh, the GPU to storage transfers uh, by using RDMAs directly between the GPU and uh, the storage without going through the CPU. And uh, uh, we have many uh, like environment variables automatically configured by the Scoban orchestrator uh, to let the user programs or scripts to know uh, the configuration of the current cluster. So, uh, and we also support heterogeneous agent backends. So, uh, 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 in each agent may have a uh, different implementation of the uh, work unit provisioner. So, uh, the work unit may be just a plain container, or it may be a virtual machine, or it may be a, just a native Linux process, depending on the implementation. And we have two, uh, we have three, uh, current implementations of the agent backend. Uh, the first one is the 
active Docker based one we are using, and uh, we have also Kubernetes adapter, which abstracts an entire Kubernetes cluster as a single uh, computing node. So in this case, uh, the agent reports the resource capacity, the entire uh, re total capacity of the Kubernetes cluster uh, and makes it look like a single uh, computing server. So uh, every scheduling happens inside the Sokoban side uh, instead of using the Kubernetes side, the queuing or scheduler, uh, so that we can enforce the, our own scheduling policies and configurations. And uh, we also have OpenStack agent uh, backend, which is in still on alpha stages, but uh, it runs virtual machines instead of containers, but it can also run containers on top of OpenStack, yeah. And uh, we also have extra integrations with uh, uh, MLOps platforms. For example, I think Airflow and MLflow are currently the most well-known ones. So uh, for the Airflows, we have a two uh, size of integration. So uh, we can just run an entire MLflow, Airflow, uh, applications inside a container on top of backend.ai as Scoban Orchestrator, or uh, you can plug uh, the backend.ai platform using its own uh, container and session management API and uh, uh, to work as a kind of backend scheduler framework of the standalone Airflow service. Yeah, so there are two ways. So I'm going to show a small demo. Um, so this is our uh, web GUI uh, with where the actual users, or researchers, or uh, like machine learning developers see, and you can see the several menus that showing the current running list of the sessions and uh, how to create the sessions with the various environment and configuration options. And uh, yeah, you can also choose the batch sessions or interactive sessions and which storage folders to mount and uh, with how to set the resource amounts and uh, yeah. And uh, you can also choose like a multi-node mode or like a clustering mode and just start the sessions and it will pop up and uh, you can choose the application, interactive applications in this case. You can also directly access the shell inside the container and uh, also Jupyter Notebooks uh, right away. And all these are like uh, provided using a secure tunneling uh, with a user, per user authentication automatically. Yeah. And yeah, so this is just a plain workload here. And uh, you can also use the like code server and so on. I just skip these parts. And um, yeah, this is the administration interface. So you can configure and add or remove users and their like resource policies and uh, uh, browse through the container images and so on. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm going to skip this part. And uh, we have uh, like a new extension called Fast Track, which is uh, like a GUI based MLOps framework. Uh, so you can uh, use uh, like a, a graphical designer to uh, compose your machine learning pipelines like a data pre-processing and model training and deployments and so on uh, by adding like modules uh, on the board and connecting their inputs and outputs and so on. <laughs> so uh, you can, uh, you have the same like a configuration setups like resource amounts and which uh, container images to use and so on. And uh, after then, uh, you can run this on top of backend.ai and the Scoban orchestrator. So you can also see the YAML configurations to share uh, the pipelines with others. And uh, yeah, you can see here it's running, uh, and yeah, the, uh, the computing jobs start after their dependencies finishes with the success and so on. So. Yeah, this is uh, in currently early stage, but I think uh, uh, this will be a great enhancement to the Sokoban orchestrator so that you can use all these nice features uh, on GUI. So, okay, I think this is the 
uh, like a quick summary on the features, and I think uh, now Jonggyu can introduce our like a field cases. Yeah. Already, yeah. Okay, uh, let me share the field case. Uh, we have uh, many practical cases, uh, maybe more than 70, and the some systems uh, have uh, more than 1,000 GPUs on the system, and also the more than more than 500 OpenStack VMs. And yeah, this is just an example of the practical configurations with a high, avail high availability, and there are some tests. This is uh, done in United Kingdom. So with uh, that kind of different abstractions, we could achieve the optimal performance for the hardware. For example, this is the example to train the large language model. Actually, the, the theoretical teraflops is the, the uh, 150 for the GPUs, and we achieved uh, almost uh, similar the, to the yeah, reach the limit. So, and we just uh, com uh, uh, compared with the slurum case, and we found that our system is just less than one, one point difference between the slurum optimized workload and our automated workload on containers. And also, with the, uh, the GPU abstraction, we could adopt the Magnum GPU direct storage. Uh, made by NVIDIA and the Weka.io, this is the network access strategy. So we could, uh, we could make the uh, world first implementation for the GPU direct strategy with a container-based AI cluster. So it achieved uh, uh, faster than the 150 gigabit for second. So it could fit the GPUs enough. <laughs> And let me just summarize. Uh, we designed the new orchestrator based on the completely different abstraction. There is no part. There is no limitation. Everything is very fluid. And it's easily hackable because it's written in Python. And also, we optimize the allocation and deployment of acceleration hardware, including GPUs and MPUs and then networks, especially for the infinite band. And also, we exploit the full potential performance for in multi-node situations with a uh, 100 of GPUs. And also, we achieved the performance comparable to bare metal workload uh, with SRAM or other the bare metal scheduler. So we could make the GPU to GPU networking, GPU direct storage automatically configure, compu configurable with uh, just a single click of uh, MUI. And we achieved the theoretically maximum performance with uh, GPUs and uh, GPU direct storage too. So there are more and more stories, but we have a very limited time. So if you have a question, you can just visit us after this meeting. We will wait to hear, wait here. So uh, give any kind of question to us. So thank you for listening, and enjoy the Open Plus Summit. Thank you.